We've got some Browns news to talk about on today's Cleveland Browns report. Unfortunately, it's not all good news, as you might have already seen. We have some injury news, and injury news sucks no matter when, especially sucks in the offseason, though, right? I think we can all agree getting injured is never good, but getting injured in the offseason when you're working out on your own time to get ready for the regular season really feels like a double whammy. But Josina Anderson, the first one to tweet out this morning, I'm told the Browns have concern that wide receiver Michael Woods may have torn his Achilles while working out with quarterback Deshaun Watson in Texas. And I can confirm in a follow-up tweet from the Cleveland Browns themselves that Michael Woods did indeed rupture his Achilles, and they say he will likely miss the 2023 season. It's a big-time bummer, right? Michael Woods last year, a six-round pick out of Oklahoma, just five grabs, 45 yards in the regular season. But in the preseason, which I know it's just preseason, but I think during the month of August last year, a lot of us felt like this Michael Woods guy actually could be a bit of an impact player. Unfortunately, he got injured middle of the preseason, never really got his footing in the regular season, and they never really had many formations, which included multiple receiver sets and spread the football around with Jacoby Brissett. But Michael Woods, we're thinking of you right now. So everyone show the guy some love. Let's get the number 12 going in the comment section his jersey number to help wish him a quick and speedy recovery everyone watching spam 12 you guys had no issues spamming everything under the sun yesterday shout outs to come later but everyone show michael woods some love right now from everyone here at the browns report now the wide receiver room i don't want to say it's a good thing but fortunately he was not one of the top four wide receivers if we're looking at it through the lens of what does this mean for a 2023 impact. Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Elijah Moore, and Marquise Goodwin, still your top four receivers. Michael Woods was sort of a roster bubble guy. If Cleveland was going to take six receivers, well, those top four faces right there I think are pretty much locks, especially the first three. Uh, David Bell, he's a lock, I think. And then you got a battle between Jakeem Grant, Michael Woods, Demetric Felton, Mike Harley, right? Guys who have seen the field for the Browns uh, the last two seasons or at least were signed to do so. So I'm going to say two roster spots are up for grabs because I'm starting to think with how much the Browns are investing at the wide receiver position, maybe they go seven wide receivers. Right? Maybe they don't go with the usual six and instead they go with seven. So if that's the case, I think Cooper, DPJ, Goodwin, and Elijah Moore are all locks. I'm going to toss in David Bell in there too. Um, so that has two open spots. So it's up to a rookie potential. Like, are they going to draft a wide receiver now? I don't know if Michael Woods' injury alter, uh, ultimately dramatically impacts the Browns' draft strategy. But maybe after this spot, after this injury, they do decide, you know what? We've got an extra spot open. We want to go heavy wide receivers on the roster this year. So we're going to go draft a receiver a bit earlier than we expected. The reason why I bring this up is because Josina also tweeted out yesterday, the Browns hosted wide receiver Tank Dell from Houston today and are expected to host wide receiver Jalen Hyatt uh, from Tennessee per league sources. So why are the Browns looking at two wide receivers that are round two, early round three guys, if they're all set at wide receiver? We're going to break that down in more detail on a future video. If you guys are looking for a draft rumors update when it comes to visits, players the Browns are eyeing, really anything under the sun, Hit that sub button, and if we get 20 new subs, I'll know there's some interest from you guys watching that, hey, what's the latest on all the draft buzz? Because it is April, so 20 new subscribers, and tomorrow, Wednesday or Friday's video, we'll kind of round up all the latest Browns draft rumors. Moving on to some other news now. Defensive tackle Al Woods is visiting with the Browns and the Jets this week, according to Ian Rappaport. Now, Woods, a longtime NFL veteran, he turned 36 years old in March, so he has been around for quite some time. Last season, according to PFF, he was the 32nd best defensive tackle. That is a country mile ahead of any defensive tackle on the Browns roster in 2022. Now, over the last four seasons, he has been with Seattle in stint number two for the last three 
and he has been somewhat sneaky productive, right? 14 games, 16 games, 16 games, starting all those games, being very productive, but also being very reliable, right? Being available for a guy who just turned 36 years old. You don't really find that all that often at this day and age in players' points of career. So Al Woods in his career, 293 tackles through 12 seasons, originally drafted by the Bucks. Went to Seattle, went to Tennessee, went to Indy, went back to Seattle. He's been all over the place. 28 tackles for loss, 9 sacks, and 7 pass breakups. So where would Al Woods fit on this depth chart? I think you know who three of the four guaranteed starters are. Garrett, Tomlinson, Okoronko. But I think the last defensive tackle spot is definitely up for grabs a little bit. So do you sign Al Woods and have Al Woods... Perion Winfrey and Jordan Elliott sort of battle it out to be the two top guys and then have a three-man rotation between Tomlinson, Woods slash Winfrey slash Elliott. You follow what I'm saying, right? Between Elliott, Jordan Elliott, Al Woods, and Perion Winfrey, top two guys through training camp and preseason are kind of splitting that last defensive tackle spot and you get a, a bit of a rotation going in that position. Now, we're going to break down this potential signing in more detail in just a second, but I want to give a quick shout-out right now to Brown superfan Michael Ernsky. He was the viewer of the month last month in March, a native of Bender, Ohio. Now he is spreading the lovely dog pound gospel from Charlotte, North Carolina. So shout out to you, Michael. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Everyone watching right now, let's get Bender in the chat right now for our guy Ernsky, a Brown super fan from North Carolina, originally from Bender, Ohio. But you know how Brown's backers work. I mean, it does not stop at the state border. It goes from coast to coast, from pole to pole. So shout out to you, Michael. Thank you so much, man. Now, when it comes to the defensive tackle room, Andrew Barry, I think he's not waiting around, right? He didn't, he's not taking the same approach he took last year, which is in a fair approach to, hey, I drafted Tommy Togiai. I drafted Jordan Elliott in rounds three and four. I want to see how those guys work out. I'm going to add another defensive tackle and parry on Winfrey. And then I went cheap and signed Taven Bryan. We're going to go young, right? No, this year he is not waiting to see if one of these young defensive tackles kind of step up into a bigger role and look like starting NFL material. No, he's going around. The, he's going with the approach of those guys last year were not it. So I'm not going to put all my eggs in their basket of hopefully they have a great offseason and work out really well. If I can find an upgrade, even if that means stealing some snaps from someone who could be a potential piece of this team, because I know Al Woods is better, well then, I'll sign Al Woods. Now, if I had to project, if Al Woods does get signed, what could the defensive line rotation look like, specifically the defensive tackle position? Dalvin Tomlinson last year for Minnesota played about 62% of the snaps. I'm give him a bit of an uptick because the Browns are paying him handsomely. If they sign Al Woods, I think he'll be the second defensive tackle in this rotation, a little bit behind at 60%. Perry on Winfrey, I'm going to tell you why I've got him number three right now, ahead of Jordan Elliott or maybe a rookie that they draft. And Tommy Togiai, sorry, dude, he just got blasted to the sun. Like, I just don't see a spot for him in this defensive tackle rotation. We're going to look at some stats in just a brief moment, but it is April. Draft season's here. Todd McShay just dropped a new mock draft. It's awful. I'm, I'm a little happy the Browns aren't picking in rounds one or two because I can guarantee whatever McShay was going to say they would do would be absolutely wrong. But hey, if you want to wear the hat that Browns draftees will be sporting in Kansas City, use our link, chatsports.com slash Browns hat, to get the official 2023 NFL draft hat. I put that link in the comments and the description of today's show. Now, looking at the Browns' defensive tackle room, potentially, with Al Woods tossed into it, I think this would be your four defensive tackles. I think Jordan Elliott would probably win the job. Uh, if they did not, like, if they sign Al Woods, they're probably not going to sign a defensive tackle all that early because unless they want to roll five defensive tackles or cut Jordan Elliott, 
Where is he going to fit on the roster? You could try and stash him on the practice squad. But if you stash him on the practice squad, he is vulnerable to getting claimed by another team. Now, the reason why I got Perry on Winfrey as my DT3 right now ahead of Jordan Elliott is let's go back in time for a second here. On the left-hand side of your screen, those are Winfrey's PFF grades from the entirety of the 2022 season. On the right-hand side, it's what he did the last six weeks, weeks 13 to 18. He got better in every single spot despite playing, you know, fewer snaps in total, but overall grade from 41.6 to 49.7. His run defense got way better. Pass rush was somewhat the same. Tackling got better. Winfrey sort of shrugged the character concerns that we saw earlier on when, hey, dude, this is the NFL. Maybe you don't get hurt riding a bird scooter on a Wednesday afternoon. Like, that's just not what you're supposed to be doing when you play in the National Football League. And it's October. I don't know what kind of message Miles Garrett or Kevin Stefanski ultimately got through to him when they sat him, what, once, twice last year and made him a healthy scratch because he was not at a maturity level for the National Football League. But at the end of the season, I think he sort of woke up and got the picture of, hey, you might have been, you know, king of the castle in college at Oklahoma, but right now you're at the bottom of the barrel. You got to work your way up. You're a fourth round draft pick. You got to get in line. You got to get in shape. And I bet that Jim Schwartz is going to be a much better motivator and get these guys where they need to be more than a certain previous defensive coordinator did. That's going to do it for us on today's show. If you like today's episode, hit me up on Twitter, at Matthew Petey. I always talk brownies, talk NFL over there. We will sign off, and hey, hopefully we are back with a draft rumors video later on if we pick up 20 subs. So if you're already subscribed, I don't know, send it to a friend, send it to a family member, tell them to subscribe. That way we can get more Browns fans here at the Browns Report.